Hey you guys, welcome back to Leanne's Corner. How are you guys doing today? I hope you guys are having are having a lovely Sunday like myself. I went to church today. Church was good. I enjoyed it. Beautiful service. And then the kids did a Christmas play right after, which my kids were a part of. It was so beautiful. Like I learned so many things from that church play. It was awesome. I just really did enjoy it. So anyway, I'm going to be reviewing Love and Hip Hop. New York and I haven't reviewed this is like my first review so you guys bear with me I'm gonna do the best I can so the show starts off with Remy Ma and she's performing and she get her she doing the damn thing so then after that she meets um in VIP with Ra and they're talking whatever giggling they only had like 30 damn seconds to like talk before a papoose came in and was like yo 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 what's up rob we gotta go we gotta go babe like come on we gotta go you got curfew and in his confessionals he was just saying like he doesn't want to lose her so he wants to do everything by the book and help her stay on track so he will doesn't have to lose his wife again which i applaud him for that with him and remy they're a beautiful couple i love this couple yandy and mindy sees like they're another couple that I love on this show. And so they're talking, the kids are playing or whatever. And then I guess the kids walk, you know, they go to their rooms or whatever. And Yandy says that they need a house. And Mindy Sue was like, yo, like right now? And she was like, yeah. And he was like, you know, I signed the plea deal. So why would, you know, he doesn't want to leave her behind with the house and the kids to take care of like he doesn't want to want to put that burden on her and she was just like well why are you thinking um thinking negative and not positive or whatever and he was like because you don't know what can happen with signing that plea deal so like i totally respect mandisi's for that and i'm gonna need yandy to like open her eyes and see that reality is this is reality she just doesn't you know She's steady trying to think of it as, like, this fairy tale when that's not what it's going to be. Like, brother's going away. So, then it moves on to Tara and Peter fucking Gunn. Tara has to be the most stupidest bitch on the planet. Like, excuse my language. I know I just got from out of church or whatever. But she has to be the most stupidest stupidest bitch in the world her and amina like peter guns peter guns reminds me of ice jj fish and i will leave a picture at the end to um show like with their picture side by side because they look too much alike for me but anyway so it gets it shows um peter guns and tara sleeping on a fucking pallet they call it a blow-up bed but that wasn't a blow-up bed that was a um pallet to me a thick pallet so anyway, they they're sleeping there in, in Tara's confessional. She's like, I know, I know, I know what you guys are thinking, you know, whatever, whatever, and blah blah blah, a whole bunch of bullshit. She felt and said, and she was like, things just happened or whatever. So I guess he helped her. He was supposed to be helping her move in, and then they had a few drinks, and they ended up having sex and passing out. So. Like, she was like, it wasn't supposed to happen again, blah, blah, blah. And I guess she done moved into the building that Peter and Amina done moved into. So, I noticed that Peter Guns is walking towards the elevator. So, I'm thinking he finna go to the ground floor. Nigga went up or down. He didn't go to the ground floor. He went to Amina's place. Peter gets in the house and Amina was like, yo, you're not coming home. When you don't come home or you plan on not coming home, you need to call me. He was like, well, I didn't want to wake you up. So then they start arguing over her and she was like, I agreed to Tara moving into the same building because, you know, I thought you would be home or you dumb bitch. Like the fuck, you guys might as well take you the kids, you three dumbasses and move into one big house together. And 
when I mean big house, I'm talking about a mansion. So Tara can have Tara and the kids can have her side, and Amina and her child can have the other side. And then Peter, all he has to do, he ain't even got to travel far. He just got to walk to one side of the house when he wants to fuck around with either one of them. Like it's just so freaking stupid. Like how stupid can you women be? You guys, these women are just making themselves look stupid, and I just feel as though they, you know, get this big ass mansion, y'all move in, and then, you know, like, then you guys can see Peter whenever the fuck y'all want to, because, and I don't see what the fuck y'all fighting over. Peter is not even that fucking cute. Nigga ain't even cute. Then it moves on to Bianca, aka Yum B, Miss. Chicken noodle soup, chicken noodle soup, chicken noodle soup. What a soda on the side. Chicken noodle soup, chicken noodle soup, chicken noodle soup. What a soda on the side. I let it rain. I clear it out. I let it rain. I clear it out. I let it rain. I clear it out. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> it. It goes on to her in the studio and she's all like, I heard you. You see me with a fat ass? I heard you. I heard you. Did you hear me the first time? I heard you. I'm like, okay, girl, I hear you. I hear you. Now, what the fuck you saying? <laughs> so, um, Yandy walks in or whatever, and, and Yandy's confessional, she was just like, she's not up for, you know, managing no one hit wonder. So, they go to talking, and basically, you know, her brother passed away, and then she didn't have the right people behind her. So that's why she was kind of gone for like nine years. But at the end of the day, like you were sleeping some of those years, like because I just don't see like how I understand that her brother died or whatever. And her brother was her backbone. But, you know, she could have after chicken noodle soup, she could have went so far. But I guess, you know, I can I do kind of understand what she's going what she's saying, like, when you don't have the right management, it's hard to do anything. So I understand that. And so Yandy was like, you know, um, she could, pro she could um, prove to her that she's willing to take everything to the next level by doing the uh, Gwenning Fest DJ, by DJ Self. It's all DJ Self shit or whatever. And so... Bianca was really happy about that. So then it moves to BBOD, bad bitches on deck. So Ra is going to be managing them, and they go to um one of the girls' family yacht or whatever, and they sit on it just chilling, still hooked up to the damn pole because they ain't been the boat didn't fucking move. So. They're sitting out there, and they were like, you know, what's up, what's up? And um, they were like, Rob was like, i just been working or whatever. And the girl, Sexy Lexa, was like, working with who? And um, she was like, you know, I was working on other people or whatever and doing my thing. And she was like, you ain't supposed to be working with nobody but us. And then Rob was taken aback like, bitch, don't get your ass slapped. Don't get your ass talked out of a deal that you ain't even got yet. So... Um, Rob was like, y'all bitches don't pay my mortgage, so these, I can already see it, that these girls are gonna be a huge, huge problem, and what the fuck does Sexy Lexi have on in her confessional, that shit was so ugly, they weave is ugly, they just fucking ugly, like, I couldn't tell what she had on, like, I didn't know if it was, like, a dress with a circle and, like, with a bit cut out, and... Or if it was just a crop top with a with a high waisted skirt or just a skirt, whatever the fuck it was, it was ugly. It wasn't cute. But the girls just started talking about the reason why they're like they are is because they haven't worked with a lot of good managers since I guess the managers that they did have in the past were like not good for them. So that's why they're so ratchet. So, Ra lets them know that she got them into a showcase or whatever. A, the DJ self um, went in fest or whatever with Mariah Lynn and Young B. So, they like, Young B, where y'all dig her up from? So, um, Ra was like, so, you know, what's going on with you and um, what's up with you and Young B? So, they sell her, like, the girl with the shaved side head. I forgot her name already. But... <sighs> 
the girl with the shaved head and the purple weave or whatever, she was like, yo, five years ago, me and uh, young B done got into it and she had a problem with my friend and then I jumped in it or whatever and then I bust her. She bust me upside the head. She bust me upside the head, yo, like she bust me. So I'm like, five years ago and you still got a problem with this girl? Like, bitch, where, why you ain't get her back after your stitches healed? The fuck? You're the dumb one for letting her get away with something like that if you about that life. Now, you it's five years later. You need to sit your ass down and focus on your career because it's just, it ain't worth it. It was five years ago. Get the fuck over it. So, Rogers lets these girls know, look, it ain't going to be no fucking head busting at this thing. If it is, let me know now and I'll cut you guys off right now. So, they was like, you know, we want this and whatever. And Sexy Lexi, she's her, she's already annoying to me. Like, hey, I don't like her already. And then neither do I like the purple-headed ass bitch either. But I don't, I don't like these girls. Bad news. So, then it moves on to Remy Ma and Papoos. They're playing chess or whatever, checkers or whatever the fuck they were playing. So, um... You know, Remy's just like, yo, like, I still feel like I'm in prison. And she said, I got you. You know, she said, you just rushed me away the other night. And she was like, I just got out of um, a place where I was there for six months, six years, four months and five days, some shit like that. And, you know, she said, I still feel like I was locked up. She said, I, I'm getting tired of being told what to do, blah, blah, blah. And she said, she's she doesn't like the fact that she still has she's basically still she still feels locked up so um papoose was just like you know basically he doesn't want to lose her again and he apologizes you know what i'm saying but when she left he said you weren't the only one that was locked away he said i was locked up mentally because i didn't have you here with me so, like, I understand both of them. You know what I'm saying? I understand. But, girl, Remy Ma, just stick it out and it will be over in a minute. You'll be to a place where, like, you can stay out as long as you want to. You guys, you two can enjoy life without having the law on your back anymore. Like, just hang in there, girl, and it'll be okay. Then it moves on to Mr. DJ Self. You know, if you're not winning, you're not winning. If you're winning, you're winning. His ass. So, He's um on the air and he has Mariah Lynn in there. And she does her live whatever her performance over the radio. So it just starts off like a cheerleader beat. What's upon a time that long ago I was a ho. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't believe this chick just said that. Like, once upon a time, not long ago, I was a hoe. Well, at least she keeping it real. Like, is she just saying, like, she worked her way out of the foster care. She's from Jersey, blah, blah, blah. She reminds me of the chick from uh, Hustle and Flow. The white girl from Hustle and Flow. I don't... <laughs> Poor little snowflake. <laughs> then it moves on to Papoose and Remy. And they're, like, in this little restaurant or whatever. And... He gives her a bag with a card and then she's pulling it out and she is two baby dolls in there and one's a boy and one's a girl. And basically what he's saying is like he wants to have a baby with her this or whatever. They made an agreement to like, if you give me the wedding, I will have you a baby. I'll have your baby or whatever. And I feel like, you know what I'm saying? Just let it happen. Just let it flow. If the baby comes along, fine. If the baby doesn't come along, fine. I understand Papoose wants a baby or whatever, but just let it flow. Don't rush it. Don't, please don't rush it. Like, and I feel like Remy should have spoke up and was like, yo, like, you know, let's just let it happen. But, hey, if they're fine with making that agreement, hey, I'm all for it. So now they're at the Gwinning Fest, and, <laughs> okay, so they got BBOD and Mariah Lynn, and then they have Young B. So they go up against each other. Everybody was whack. Like, the best one out of the whackness was Young B, and she did pretty good. And then after that, they were, like, throwing you know, throwing shade or whatever, and then in the confessionals or whatever, Mariah Lynn's talking about, don't, what are these girls talking about? No one has a hit record on the radio but me. I'm the only one that has a record. Like, I'm like, girl, where? I ain't hearing who. Like, 
So then the ugly girl with the purple hair walked over there to where Young B was sitting, which I felt like that was so fucking unnecessary. Be professional. You guys are being watched. You guys are fighting to be managed. Like, come on. So she walks over there, whatever, starts some shit, and um, her and B... Bianca, they get into it or whatever. And Bianca's like, bitch, you got on Harachis. Like, what the fuck is Harachi? Somebody please comment down below and let me know what the fuck are those are. So they argue or whatever. And then security breaks it up. They go their separate ways. And sexy lady, Lexi was like, you know, bye, everybody. She just feeling herself. I think she's a little off. Then it moves on to Remy Ma and Papoose. He takes her to this, like, castle, and that's where they're going to have the wedding. They're happy about it. They discuss it. It's like, she's so happy. He gets down on one knee, and then he proposes to her. Then it goes on to Yandy and Mendici sitting, like, what it looks like a park it could be. So they're talking, and he lets her know that, like, he can be gone for five or 20 years, somewhere between five or 20 years. And she's just like, you know, how do I get through this? Like, you may not see, you know, our son until he's like 23. And he was like, you just got to be strong. And I'm glad that he's like facing the music. Like, look, yo, I done did this shit. Now I got to pay for it. So I, it's, it's hard. And I never have ever been in that position. Like, my son's dad been in jail or whatever, but hey, like, <laughs> ain't mean shit to me because we ain't together. So, like, but yeah, I just, all I can, all the only advice I can give for Yandy is, like, just pray about it. He may not have to do all that time. So, anyway, thumbs up this video, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will be doing the next review for Love and Hip Hop episode 2 tomorrow or probably Tuesday, whichever one. But yeah, comment, like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a lovely night. And I will see you guys in the next one.